Hello, thank you for joining with me. Today I will be reading the review of chapter 11 by Robert Perry. And this is with the Course Companion reading um, schedule by Emily Bennington and Robert Perry out of the complete and annotated edition of A Course in Miracles. Day 152, review of chapter 11. Please bear with me for one moment. I forgot my glasses. Section 1, Your Place in God's Mind. I need to look without shrinking on the ego's dark cornerstone, my circular belief that the ego I made is my father. Then I will be ready to look at my true foundation and to reclaim my place in God's mind. God created me because he did not will to be alone, so he gave me a place in his mind that is mine forever. I reclaim this place by granting my brothers their place. Their place in God's mind as well, as we are one. Section 2. Healing as the recognition of your will. My true will is God's, but I have forgotten my will. So now my will seems to be in conflict with God's. This is why the Holy Spirit's guidance seems to conflict with my will. However, his guidance actually represents my own true will. Whenever I attack, I am forgetting my will. Whenever I give healing, I am recognizing my will and remembering that God's will is mine. 3. The Dark Companions who will I choose as my guest on the journey, the dark comforters or God's comforter? The dark comforters, fear and grief, lead me on a dark journey that is hard and lonely. I must refuse to let them into my mind and instead invites God comforter, God's comforter to be my guest. Only he can truly comfort me if I offer him just a little place in my mind. He will fill it with light, and I will then walk in a light so bright that the dark comforters cannot be seen. God's Blameless Son, Section 4, Chapter 11 I cannot enter God's presence if I attack His Son. To enter, I must unite with Christ at the altar, and this means I must accept the entire sonship as my soul. If I blame a brother, I am hating part of my own soul. When I withdraw blame from my brothers, it is easy to direct it at myself. But self-blame is ultimately the same as blaming others. Blame must be undone in my mind, not re reallocated reallocated, excuse me. Five, the dynamics of the ego. I am ready to look at the ego calmly and without shrinking in order to let it go. I can do so without fear because the ego is powerless. What I need to look at is its goal of autonomy. This goal promises power, but in the end, the ego makes me afraid. Afraid of myself and fear is an experience of powerlessness. In truth, I am completely dependent on God, and He is just as dependent on me, and together we are independent of all else. Section 6 Selecting Perceptions Witnesses The ego analyzes breaking up what it sees into disconnected pieces. It focuses on errors, making real every mistake it sees. The world it sees is thus a chaotic mass of errors which seems to demonstrate the reality of the ego. Instead of, instead of analyzing, I need to accept. 
I need to accept the one unbroken sun behind all the forms of mistakes of the world and mistakes of the world. Every person I see becomes a witness for the sun or for ego. So I need to accept, I need to accept the one unbroken sun behind all the forms and mistakes of the world. Every person I see becomes a witness for the sun or for the ego. Section 7, Believing in the Resurrection. Belief determines perception, and so if I believe in the resurrection, I will see it everywhere. I have crucified myself, having followed the God of crucifixion. But God has given me eternal life, and so my crucifixion must be no more than a dream. I rise from this dream of death by seeing all my brothers as resurrected and by actively helping them off the cross. I need to guard them in their resurrection. Section 8. The Real World The world I see is not the real world. I see a world composed of both good and evil. The real world is composed only of the loving thoughts in this world. These are all that is real here, and they are eternal. I see only, if I see only goodness, I will remember heaven, where goodness has no opposite. Section 9, Asking for God's Answer I am like a little child. I don't understand what I see, and I need to ask what it means. I am afraid to ask the Holy Spirit for fear, of what he might demand of me. Yet only he gives and never takes. I have misinterpreted my brothers, seeing them as monsters, yet I am merely deceived in them. When I perceive offense in them, I need to pluck it from my mind. I need to accept that I do not understand them and ask the Holy Spirit what they really are. Thank you so much for joining with me. Chapter 11, God or the Ego. This is the conclusion of Chapter 11 on Day 152. Sorry, my pages are all mixed up, so I'm trying to keep it straight. And now, tomorrow, we will move on to Chapter 12. Thank you so much. Love you.